Hey guys, it's Breen, and today I'm going to be starting off my reading vlog for The One by Kira Cass. This is the third book in the selection series. Originally, it was a trilogy, so this was supposed to be the finale, but there was two more companion books that were added on, and then a short story collection as well. But this is supposed to be the ending of America and Maxin and Aspen's story. <laughs> if you don't know anything about the selection, I have been talking about it on my channel recently in a series of reading vlogs. I have like three out so far two for the first book and one for the second one and I explain it a lot in there but I'll give a little bit of a brief synopsis. It's pretty much 35 women are chosen in this futuristic North America to compete for the heart and the crown with Prince Maxon. He is looking for a wife and the way that the princes of this new country, it's called Ilya, but it's North America. Things have happened, like lots of wars. There's been like four world wars and everything. So definitely a lot of shit has changed and now it's like a monarchy and everything. This is how he finds his wife. You would think Prince Maxon would not be cute, would be someone you know, that just isn't the greatest guy, but no. Prince Maxon is the softest boy. Not the softest boy. He is one of the soft boys that I love very much, and I have been enjoying it. Also, disclaimer, this series is very trashy, very entertaining and everything. Not the most literary genius books of all time, that's not why I give them five stars. It is because of the drama, the entertainment, and the romance. I can't get enough of it. I read it years ago in middle school and it, these books are just important to me. <laughs> important to my freaking childhood is the first young adult series I've ever read and y'all have been really enjoying my reading vlogs for it so I thought I would continue on and at least do it for this book as well. I'm currently 25 pages into this book. I haven't gotten that far into it obviously but I am ready to go. I want to power through this whole book probably in a day or two because I can't get enough of the drama and I genuinely cannot remember what happens in this book. All I know is America's still there and Prince Maxon has like four or five girls left. So I, I just need her to be with him. We do not talk about the love triangle over here with Aspen. He is not cute. He is not a winner in my eyes. <laughs> it is all Prince Maxon. That is the real tea here, is Prince Maxon is way better than Aspen could ever imagine or dream to be. Aspen gives me those Gale vibes of just not cute. Like, you know, like I, I feel that. So that's who he is for me. Can't wait to get started and see how the heck this trilogy or series ends because I literally don't know what I'm getting in for. The Elite was a chaotic and dramatic book even more than the first one so I guess we're gonna find out if this book takes it a notch up. Is it gonna get even more dramatic? Is it gonna pull out my heart? I don't know. Is it gonna frustrate me? Am I gonna want to punch someone? We're just gonna have to find out, aren't we? So join me on this journey of reading this book. Hey everyone, I'm back with another update about the one by here guys oh i just exposed myself so <laughs> last clip i never took off the jacket before i haven't seen what this book has looked like until literally like i think it was last night i was deciding to get more into the book and look at what i found it's disgusting it looks like i peed on it and it's a signed first edition copy i also broke the spine so that's cute but what did I do to it? Like, I don't even want to touch it. It's that disgusting. But it's fine. There's been some updates in the book. I'm on page 138. I read up to like 105 last night. And I'm going to read some more tonight, obviously. But dear Lord, America is still so confusing. But finally, if you don't want a spoiler on who she's going to end up with, I'm pretty sure it's pretty obvious just from the description who she probably ought to end up with. But dude, she has finally realized that Aspen isn't cute. <laughs> and Prince Maxon is the man for her, but she's still trying to fight for him. There's still like three other girls there. Something even more shocking happened. I said it in one of my other vlogs that Celeste, the big bitch of the series, I felt like I remembered she had a redemption arc and she got her redemption arc. And let me just say, 
it's odd. They went from hating each other to liking each other in 0.2 seconds. And I appreciate the redemption of her because it's just annoying, like, them hating each other so much. Like, get over it, guys. Like, y'all are stupid. America just walks in on Celeste crying about something and she's never seen her cry before. So she's like, wait, does this girl have emotion? I would have never thought she would have emotion. And then they talked. And just because, like, America is the people's favorite now, Celeste was like, okay, I give up on the competition. I'll be your friend now. And I'm like, what? So now, like, Celeste is talking to her all nice. Like, she's like, oh my god, you can meet my friends. Like, they, she loves her now. And I, oh, my mom is so loud. But now she loves her and I just don't get it. Like, how did that happen so quick? I'm not mad about it, though, because I'm like, y'all needed to just get over it and I kind of like this Celeste version where she's just really strong and like she does whatever she wants. It's fine but still the past stuff she did was like really terrible so I don't know if it fully excuses what she has done. You know because there was that tidbit about she put glass in her maid's shoes. Like how do you explain that one? Because none of her reasonings explains that one. Like what the heck that's just evil. But now... <laughs> America actually wants smacks in for for sure. Oh my god, I can't speak. For sure, finally. She wants him for real. But they still cannot communicate their feelings effectively whatsoever. I don't know why. I'm still enjoying it. Like, I, I'm here for it. Obviously, it got some tabs. The drama is juicy. But I'm just ready for them to, like, love each other. But this book so far is a lot about the rebels and, like, you know, people hating the government, like what are they gonna do? The typical dystopian stuff. And I must say it, America Singer thinks she can be Katniss Everdeen, but no, there's no way. Literally some of the lines make me cringe cause she's like, oh my God, I gotta fight for the people. Everybody needs to fight. Like something that Katniss would try to say, but Katniss would say it better. So I'm just like, it's cringy. I don't know which one was written first. I guess The Hunger Games was probably written first. She tries too hard to take on those Katniss vibes. It doesn't work. It doesn't work, but it's still enjoyable enough. She just needs to calm down. Some happen. I would love to talk about it, but I don't want to spoil you. Oh, I really want to say, okay, if you don't care for a spoiler, it's very minor. America gets freaking shot in the arm. She's like, doesn't even realize it at first. She starts like walking away and she's like, oh my gosh, my arm is burning. I wonder what's wrong. And then she realizes she got shot. I'm like, you really didn't realize you got shot? Really? <laughs> I'll continue to update you. I'm still into it. I think I'm enjoying this one a little bit less than the other ones though. I don't know why. Maybe the drama isn't as juicy. It's more about like the government problems and all these annoying rebels attacking. Yeah, I just want the romance. Give me some more of the romantic happy times and the juiciness because her trying to be Katniss is just not working. Bye. something. Maxon seems so confused. Like, obviously he is pretty much in love with America, but he seems to be conflicted still on what he's gonna do. And maybe he's just scared of making the final decision, or maybe he really is feeling something from that other girl, Chris. Because remember, in my last reading vlog, I talked about how he might be getting feelings for another girl and it's super freaking annoying and it's obviously because America's been annoying herself and can't make up her freaking mind, but in this book, she's finally made up her freaking mind and wants him for real for real now. But now he is not ready to end the selection and I know this boy loves some America. It's pretty freaking obvious, but something's stopping him. And you know what I think that something is? I think he's suspecting that Aspen, Officer Legger, the soldier, is the guy that America was dating before all of this. I think he has seen the connection 
and now is feeling a little bit insecure about their relationship because she hasn't told him about that. You know, I don't think it's that bad what happened because obviously he's dating other women as well. I think it's just worse that he doesn't know about it and this guy is still here. It's just awkward and she just definitely needs to open up and like talk about it and then it'll be fine and then everything will be cute and they can have happily ever after. Oh my gosh everyone. I'm on page 278 and I'm really stressed out right now. I was just having the best time, the cutest time. Max in America, adorable. Things are like peaking. It is the best, cutest moments. And I knew, like, I couldn't remember what happens at the end of this book that would like mess things up. Cause you know, every book before the big happy resolution, there's gonna be some shit. There's gonna be a shit storm. Something's gonna mess up that happy moment we just had. Although America was trying to officially like talk to Aspen and Maxon about her past with Aspen, like just put more detail into it. After such a good moment with Maxon. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> After such a good moment with Maxon, she's about to talk to Aspen. It's pretty obvious that both Aspen and America are both not feeling each other that way anymore. And I actually am really appreciating the friendship that they have built, like just a soul friendship. I really like that. Like it's cool to see. And like, obviously there's been things that Aspen has said that have bothered me, but I think overall, like I think he's a cool guy. Like I don't despise him. I think he's said some annoying things for sure, but I think he's a really good soldier, a good guard. And I don't know, I just think he shines in that job. And America has said that too. He's her guard. So he, she came out to like talk to him and then Maxon like sees them like just a little bit too close and like it, it wasn't even meant to happen. And like, <laughs> I see Maxon going off and I'm scared because these two just will not talk to each other sometimes. I just can't tell you how happy I just was squealing, squeaking. I'm not even joking. Like I was that happy that I was freaking out on that level. And to have it go downhill so quickly, I am really sad. Like I feel sad. So I just need to keep reading cause I'm sure it's gonna get resolved. I just have to push through this sad moment. I just saw the next page and saw how sad this was about to get. I don't remember how this ends. Like I know how it ends, but I don't remember how we get there. So this is pain, what's about to come for me. So I'm, <laughs> I'm just really nervous that this is gonna be really painful. Wish me luck. Oh my gosh. I'm on page 292 and something just happened. I completely forgot about that. Like I literally have tears in my eyes. I did not think this book would choke me up. As soon as I read that sentence, I could not read anymore. Like I, <laughs> I just like looked and dazed all over my room and I'm, I just don't know how to continue after reading that line because whoa. And I don't think this affected me nearly as much when I was younger because I probably didn't give a shit, but now I give a shit for some reason. I'm upset about it. This is like more serious shit, not just um, Maxin thinking he doesn't want America anymore. That will solve itself. This is something like that's actually really freaking sad and I completely forgot about it. And I'm just distraught right now for, <laughs> I'm distraught. <laughs> I just, I gotta keep going. Like I literally, want to sob. I don't know why this is affecting me this way, but I could sob if I let myself. Hey everyone, it's Peyton back with another update and I've officially finished the one by Here Cass. I loved this book. <laughs> Whoa. I loved this book so much so that I even read the bonus scene at the end and I never do that. I never care enough to read bonus scenes. I finish a book and be like, yes, I finally did it. Boom update Goodreads. I don't need to read the bonus scene, but I read the bonus scene. That's how much I freaking loved this. I got so emotional in the last couple chapters. It was freaking scary because this trilogy is really lighthearted and fun most of the time, but this one brought some of the scarier aspects of the Rebels, which has been in the other two books, but this one got it way freaking scarier. And I just forgot how bad that could be. Still not on a crazy level and most of this book is just romantic shit. But then there's also uh, 
the political aspect and I just really enjoyed it. It's like my um, guilty pleasure Hunger Games vibe. Like the trashy, chiller Hunger Games vibe. <laughs> but with a prince and everything, I ended up really liking how this ended. I don't have anything good to say about it other than I'm just shook and I'm really sad it's over. This put me through a journey that I can't explain. Don't know if I'm going to reread the companion books that follows, I'm just going to say America's Daughter. I don't know if I care to read it. I know I didn't like the second one very much. I thought it was disappointing. So maybe I would like the other one. I don't know if I'm going to reread it or not. I'm thinking about listening to the audiobook for the short story collection called Happily Ever After just so I can get the vibes because it has a short story from Maxon's point of view, a story from Aspen's point of view, and then one from, I believe, Celeste's point of view. I like Celeste now. Shockingly, <laughs> I, I'm surprised, but I do. I'm honestly just struck with all these feelings and emotions with how this ended. The romance in this book, I can't get enough of it. Maxon is gorgeous and he reminds me of Peta with his soft boy, amazing things he says. Like he just says it so well. Like he makes you crumble when he starts talking about how much he loves you, you know? It's just beautiful. I love that. It makes me happy. I love soft boys who communicate their emotions. I think I appreciate it even more now that I have been in a relationship. Reading books like these when I was in middle school and never freaking kissed a boy or nothing, like, it's just different when you have those experiences and you've been in a, a relationship. Mine's been like, it'll be three years in September. And I just have a greater understanding and perspective for relationships. So just seeing how kind and sweet Maxon is, is something I greatly appreciate in a way that I haven't always. Like, I feel like we never believed that these dudes existed like Maxon. And it may seem like they don't, but my boyfriend, pretty similar to some Maxon and Peta. <laughs> I hate to be a boob like that, but... I'm not trying to flex. I'm just saying, don't settle for little. Get yourself someone good or nothing at all if you don't want anybody, you know? Thanks for watching. Let me know if you want me to read the other books because maybe I will. <laughs> I'm going to take a break at least for now since I read the original trilogy. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. Let me know if you enjoyed it, if you liked seeing me read this series because it definitely was random. Emotional roller coaster. Cannot wait for the movie. Oh my god. I really hope it's successful so we can continue and like get to this point. Like I will die if the movie actually works out and we can get more of them, the whole trilogy. I'm so excited about that. I completely forgot throughout filming this video that I'm actually gonna get a movie, so. Because in the past, I was gonna get a TV show and it just never happened. Thank God it didn't because the script that got leaked was terrible. <laughs> I'm excited. I hope it works out. I hope it's good, cringy, and not just straight up terrible garbage, you know? It needs to be cute garbage. Thank you guys for watching this video. Like it, comment down below. Have a good day. Please subscribe. Make sure to follow all my social medias, which are linked down below. And go click the bell button, which is right by the subscribe button, which you should have already clicked. And goodbye.